you have a unique car rating system on the site called the Doug score appropriately right. enough. Right. How does the Doug score work? It's a, it's a, there's 10 categories to the Doug score and five of them are weekend categories. So you evaluate how a car performs like in fun duties. And then five of them are daily categories and you, you know, you evaluate how it performs like on a daily basis. And, and inherently thus it is biased a little bit towards performance cars, which is kind of the point of the channel because weekend categories aren't really half of a person's purpose for a car. Right. But, but they're half of the score. And so cars that do really well in the weekend scores kind of get a little bit, a little bit of a benefit, but, um, the, the the purpose, the initial purpose of it was the, uh, I was noticing people weren't watching my videos all the way through. And so I decided I would stick this kind of scoring system at the very end of the videos and kind of make them watch if they wanted to see it. Ah, you're people, messing with the algorithm again. That's right. And what I learned was that people will watch what they want to watch and then still skip the end of the videos, but then skip to the Doug score and watch that. So it worked out to some extent. I guess I got a few, I got an extra minute out of it, but it's all at the end. <laughs> but it it, uh, it was an interesting idea. And, and it has evolved now because I've now reviewed so many cars, but it's probably 800 cars that I've Doug scored. And so now I'm able to really directly compare stuff and, and make like legitimate, here's, this is better, here's why kind of statements in my videos. Back to the automakers, do they ever take you to task for what they perceive as a lower than deserved Doug score? I've never care? had I've never had complaints about the the score specifically. No, I've never had an automaker say no. This should have been higher, whatever. Um, but you know, I'm you get this probably having worked in your world for a while. Like you, sometimes the automakers get upset at some of the stuff you say, um, and you have to kind of decide how you want to handle that. And sometimes you just I, I've got very little patience for it. Truthfully, if it's something, if it's a factual error, that's one thing. But those are rare. Um, if they t- if it's an opinion thing, I don't I, I I have no qualms about giving the PR people my opinion. If they don't want to invite me to the next press launch, that means one less trip that I have to go. That's fine. <laughs> How many vehicles do you think you've reviewed? Uh, it's got to be I I I don't know a eight hundred maybe not a thousand okay. five six okay. a ton a mil I mean a lot. We should do a special show based off uh, a round number that you end up reviewing. Yeah, that that is true. That would be. I I don't know where I am, but it's probably a, a, a quite a few at this point. Before we get back to this interview, I want to say that this episode is brought to you by Connected by Reynolds and Reynolds. If you want to hear great conversations and Greg Eulen going deep with guests on everything from used car acquisitions to finding your niche and selling to it, I recommend adding Connected to your podcast rotation. Now let's get back to my interview. The, um, the individual reviews that you have on the site consistently rack up more than a million views, Doug. How have you been able to connect with so many people? What is the secret to getting? I don't know. I still don't know. I honestly and truly still don't quite understand exactly why my brand of reviews has gotten so strong over all these these years. I um, it was it was completely organic for for so many years. Um, I never did any paid advertising and stuff until we launched Cars and Bids, and even then we do paid advertising to get to the site, but not really to the channel. Although it's sort of a roundabout, but anyway. I, I I don't know. I I think that going. I think that one of my big secrets for a long time that I that I still think more people should copy is that I focused less on driving the car and more on the actual experience of the car. And so I really showed people like all the little details. I called them the quirks and features of the cars and showed them. You know what does this button do and all that. And I'll tell you, in a, in a Lamborghini Countach, that's interesting to people. They know it's fast. They know it's loud. They know how to. You know they've heard all that stuff. But I think a lot of people are like what the hell is this thing actually like? What do the buttons do? Where's, is there a glove button? Like people are interested in that stuff. And I think a lot of car journalists sometimes take for granted how many cars they drive. And they don't really think about the fact that a lot of people really don't have any clue, like really what these cars are like to use and what makes them special and and what makes them interesting and unique. And so I kind of pursued that, but I still, that's like kind of the only thing I can come up with that so many people were watching and it blew me away for a long time. It's authentic. It's it's um, it is not a um, a buff book, as they say in the business, right? It's not it's not done in that way. You're not overly serious, uh, right. would be my take on it. And I would say too, Doug, that as technology moves its way into these vehicles, the advent of EVs, the proliferation of electric vehicles, that reviews like that become much more important. How does so. this thing work? Yeah, I think that's exactly right. Everybody's always said to me, well, what are you going to do when electric cars and self-driving cars start to show up? I actually think it's going to be, I, my stuff specifically is going to be even more entertaining. You know, what, what these electric car companies have started to do, 
Tesla has a built-in video game controller. Ford has a, in the Lightning, there's a pad where you can draw. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that cars are going to start implementing, these weird solutions to kind of help you pass the time if your car is able to drive itself or to just distinguish themselves. Because these days, powertrains are no longer as big. Cars are not as distinctive as they once were from, from years past. And so I think automakers are going to start implementing more and more weird stuff as like signatures True. to distinguish themselves. That Ionic 5 has a little magnetic strip on the dashboard where you can put magnets if for God knows what reason you want to do that. And so that kind of little thing is like my bread and butter. And I'm, I am here for all the weird stuff that is coming. And it already, it has started to come. It has started.